Hi, my name is Evan Olivas, and today I'll be teaching you everything you want to know about viruses. Viruses are extremely small infectious agents that can only replicate inside the cells of living organisms. The structure of the virus contains a nucleic acid, which consists of either RNA or DNA, it's surrounded by a protein node, or more known as the capsid. Nucleic acid never consists of having both RNA and DNA at the same time. Also, there are times in which the virus goes into its infective form. In this form, there is a vir virus particle located on the outside of the cell called a variant. Every variant contains at least one special protein synthesized by specific genes in its nucleic acid. There are several other particles in which are composed primarily of protein integrated with a small nucleic acid molecule. This lipid and protein structure is known as the viral envelope structure. The viral envelope structure is created from the host cell membranes. In addition to having a capsid and genetic material within the structure of a virus, viruses have a head, tail, sheath, plug, and tail fibers. The head of the virus is simply known as the a, is simply a structural, structural feature and holds the capsid and case genetic material. The tail has a more functional purpose and latches onto the host cell. When the tail latches onto the host cell, the sheath becomes active and causes the virus to adhere to the host cell. By doing so, it allows, to, allows the plug to penetrate the plasma membrane where the tail fibers can help inject the viral DNA. Now we'll be moving on to the types of viruses. There are two types of primary viruses. There is the one that affects only the cells of living organisms, while other affects only bacteria. The one that affects the cells of living organisms are simply known as viruses. The other type of viruses are known as bacteriophages or phages. There are many other pathogens that affect disease in which are very similar to viruses, one being the viroid. A viroid is in fact smaller than a virus because it only contains a nucleic acid. Unlike the normal virus structure, a viroid does not have a capsid surrounding its nucleic acid. Another thing to note about a viroid is that it is only infectious to plants. Generally speaking, viruses are identified based upon the size, shape, chemical composition, and structure of its genome. What I mean by the chemical composition is that viruses are different due to the arrangement, type, and ratio of atoms in the molecules of substances. Now, a genome is a set of genes or genetic material of an organism. The genome includes both the genes and non-coding sequences of for DNA or RNA. That means a virus could either be injecting DNA or RNA into the host cell. Viruses are also classified based upon their phen phenotypic characteristics. Their phenotypic characteristics include the morphology, development, and behavior of the virus. These observations are put into two classification systems, the International Committee of Taxonomy of Viruses and the Baltimore Classification System. Lastly, viruses are also known are also different from one another by the type of disease they induce and its form, meaning when a virus first encounters a cell, it is usually not capable of infecting it quite yet. It must become a variant, which is a complete viral particle. Only after becoming a variant can the infection occur. In order for a virus to even enter a cell, it must perform one of two actions. One way is to bind to a receptor located on a susceptible cell. A susceptible cell is simply a cell that contains a receptor that a virus can attach to. The other way a virus can enter a cell is by pure force through the cell membrane and if it's there, the cell wall. When a virus injects its DNA, it is either single or double stranded. That is one thing to note before we move on to the, the two types of viral reproduction. So, the first type of viral reproduction is the lytic cycle. The lytic cycle is one of two infectious strategies for viruses. Um, one thing to especially know about the lytic cycle that is not in the lysogenic cycle, which is the other viral reproduction strategy, um, is the viral DNA exists as a separate molecule within the bacterial cell and replicates separately from the host cell. That means the um, viral DNA will eventually kill the host cell. Viruses that are reproduced by the lytic cycle are called virulent uh, viruses. Excuse me. The lytic cycle contains numerous stages in its process. The first stage of the lytic cycle is when the virus attaches to the host cell. In order for a virus to infect a host cell, it must pass through the cell membrane. 
Um, to do this, the virus uses its plug to break through and then ejects its DNA. Afterwards, the virus begins to decompose the genetic, um, the host cell genetic material. This is about when the DNA of the virus replicates separately from the host DNA, and which determines it a lytic cycle. After about 25 minutes of replication, 200 new phages are created and causes the host cell to burst. That particular time in the lytic cycle is known as lysis, in which the host cell dies due to releasing new bacteriophages. Um, now, here's an analogy that I thought would be helpful and useful in order to remember the lytic cycle. So, think about when you're blowing a balloon. The more air you pour in, or the more air you blow in, is similar to how um, the DNA replicates itself inside the host cell. Eventually, when you replicate too much of the host cells or of the viral DNA, um, no more room will be left in order for um, the viral DNA to make any more new phages. So, therefore, as you blow more into a balloon, it will eventually pop. Or in the lytic cycle, when you keep replicating uh, viral DNA, the host cell won't be able to hold any more phages and therefore it must burst. So, now moving on to the lysogenic cycle. The other cycle used for viral rejection is this. The ly lysogenic cycle is when the viral DNA replicates without destroying the host cell. That is the key difference between these two processes. Viruses that go through the lysogenic cell are known as temperate uh, viruses. Viruses that go through the lysogenic cell also go through the process similar to that of the lytic cycle. First, they must both attach to the host cell and inject its DNA. Once completing those first two stages, the viral DNA integrates into the bacterial chromosome in order to produce a prophage. Um, a prophage is a genetic material of the bacteriophage incorporated into the genome of a bacterium and is able to produce phages if activated in a specific manner. Once the bacterium begins to reproduce, the prophage is copied as well, becoming part of the daughter cells. In the final stages of the lysogenic cycle, the daughter cells continue to replicate with the copied prophage or the prophage can exit the chromosome in order to begin the lytic cycle. Now, moving on to some key differences about lytic and lysogenic cycles before we end this tutorial. So, um, first, the lytic cycle uh, does in fact kill the host cell and is a short term cycle because of that. And the lysogenic cycle does not kill the host cell because it has to replicate many times and therefore it is a long term cycle. So now that you know some general information about the two um, cycles as well as information about viruses, including its structure and their types, um, I hope you have a great day. Thank you.